So thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to be here and to uh, share a little bit. I wondered after I reflected on his invitation if he was giving me a chance to repent for the sins of my youth in front of all <laughs> folks. But I appreciate the grace of God. Aren't you glad for God's grace? Amen. It's very difficult to sum up um, what this church meant to me because it meant so much. My father, as some of you know, was a missionary in the bayous of South Louisiana for 13 years and worked there uh, prior to coming here. And um, even when he came here in 1941, still worked back in the bayous. My mother was from there. And um, so we didn't stay in any one place a long time in my early childhood. Um, we moved uh, along the Mississippi River and a community there and back on by Lafourche and Golden Meadows and the swamps and did uh, built churches and home groups in that area. And that's a whole different story. Prior, after that, we lived in a homemade house trailer, which my uncles made, my mother's brothers. And um, then briefly in New Orleans in a church basement, uh, which I didn't care for as a five-year-old. And we moved here in 42. My father started working here. I think the church was quarter time at that point. But he became full time and we moved here and the church provided us a house. So my first actual house that I remember, which was back over there on the other road, um, the church provided. And here uh, was community and stability and uh, everybody knew everybody and uh, there was uh, generally a a sense of caring for one another. And uh, community is not just a church meeting, but community is sharing life together. And um, a lot of the things that I enjoyed from the church were from church people who um, gave me opportunities. And uh, I was greatly in debt. For instance, when I was nine, Mr. Ott, who was a member of this church, and Ms. Ott, she was a school teacher, gave me the opportunity to sweep rooms at school along with some other boys. And uh, we made six cents a room. And uh, some of the guys struck for seven. And then we all lost our job. So when I was nine years old, I learned about striking. And then when I was 11, I had the opportunity to work for Mr. Willard's store. Uh, near the railroad track. Uh, his son-in-law, Mr. Reinhardt, managed the store, and he told me that he would pay me $3 for working all day Saturday. I was 11 years old, glad to get the job. And uh, at the end of the day, he gave me two forty, and uh, I was upset, and I said, you said three, and he said, I know, but I had to take out 60 cents for Social Security and income tax. And I learned to take the government when I was 11 years old. So I learned a lot growing up in Vietnam. And uh, when I was uh, 15, I got a job for Mr. Claude Jackson. That store was just right up to, across the border and uh, cutting meat, learned how to be a butcher and drive a truck. And um, when I was 14, over in the building across the road, the old chapel, my dad um, brought a close friend of his who had worked in the bayous with him, Brother J.C. Moore, to preach a revival. And Brother Moore was a good preacher, a hard preacher, and he preached, he preached about hell like he just got back. <laughs> and uh, I uh, got saved that night, and uh, he prayed with me to receive Christ. So that was the greatest thing that this church gave me was an opportunity to know the Lord. And then um, we could go on each year. There are things. I was 14 when I received the Lord. And um, 
when I was 17, I kind of backslid. We don't believe in backsliding, but we do sometimes. And as a teenager, I got caught up in the things that sometimes teenagers get caught up in. And uh, one Saturday night, late, I had a habit of coming in on Saturday night. Dad had to preach on Sunday morning, and it was very inconsiderate of me to uh, stay up late on Saturday night. He met me at the door. Dad had full head of gray hair when he was in his 30s. And uh, he uh, had a little beady blue eyes. And he, he, he met me and said, well, you're going to stay up all night and have coffee? And I said, no, sir. And he said, you know what your mother and I did tonight? And I said, no, sir. He said, we, uh, we joined hands and gave you to God. Uh, God gave you to us. We don't know what to do with you. We're giving you back to God. <laughs> So <clears throat> I learned that God can take care of his problems. When I was 18, I was, we were in a revival meeting, Brother Brantley was preaching, and um, he invited people to come forward, and I was in the choir. I had no business in the choir at that point, but um, I was running from the ministry. I didn't want to be a minister. It felt like anybody in his right mind would want to be a minister growing up a preacher's kid. I, I love my dad. He was great. But the pressures and no money and uh, the different things that go with ministers, especially in those days. Uh, our, our house was right next to the church. If the lights were left on, I got to go over and turn them off. Or if the lawn needed put cutting, I got to cut it. And uh, they called it the house we lived in a pastorium. I called it an aquarium. You just keep preachers in it. But uh, I had a few resentments. <laughs> but they gave me to God. In fact, I'd been given to God when I was born. And so when I was 18, I uh, came forward and told my father that I was giving my life to the ministry. He said, praise the Lord. I said, why? But it was, uh, I didn't feel called. I felt threatened. But uh, thank God I don't regret serving him. I'm deeply, deeply grateful. Baptist and this church in particular have given me a lot. I'm, I'm very blessed. They gave me a foundation. They gave me consistency. They gave me uh, colleges that I went to, seminary I went to, wife I married. Baptists were good to me, and this church is where it started. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity.